Dun, 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 dun. Grim Nasty TV. So I had some time to look over these diagrams a little bit, and I come to some conclusions that are very interesting. First of all, the lens here is clear indication that you are a crystal being, one that takes light and magnifies it, sending it back to the optic nerve here, which is uh, responsible for receiving electrical uh, responses for uh, the full capacity, uh, full capacity, the capacitized eye if you will, the fully capable eye, the fully perceiving eye, the fully beautiful eyes to eye uh, can transcend light to this optic nerve. You see the the yellow and the blue in there. I mean, the red and the blue, and that is uh, leading to the, to the brain, uh, which, which is uh, code for that. So it is very important that both sides of the brain are receiving light fully without convolution of the glue that is in the hollow space within that orange there that hollow space is full of glue within the water solubility the embodiment of it is holding a significant amount of it the calcification and everything else so once this is uh cleared out by way of cl uh, cleansing the eyes by way of turpentine the turpentine doesn't get past this uh Aquarius humor, this whole like uh, this clear casing on the outside, it doesn't it doesn't penetrate it. It's like a it's like an organ. Uh, the eye, if uh, if you touch your eye, if you close your eye and then push on it, uh, there was a guy. It, you'll see how hard it is. But there was a guy that I know that when I was a kid, he got beat up by some people, and uh, his eye got stomped. They stomped him until his face was purple. And I didn't see this part, but I seen him when he came back. And uh, his whole face was swollen up, and his eye was fine. So what I'm saying is, is that the eye is so powerful that it's not like uh, it's not like a marshmallow or anything like that. It's, uh, it's a powerful organ, actually. So uh, let's take a look. See, I hate that little thing there. Whatever. So as you can see, the light needs to get through back to where both sides of the brain access the electrical response to electrify the brain. And I tried that when I did three uh, drops of turpentine in the eyes, three times, three sessions, actually. So I probably did like two set, two drops each session, each eye. All right. So it was pretty intense. But the, the uh, water solubility decided to switch out. So it started pouring tears out. And when all the glue came out, it was sticky all down my face. And then the tears replace the water solubility of the eye. So the eye is smart. It says, hey, let's get this nasty stuff out of here now that we've got something to break it down. And let's uh, send some tears out and fill up the eyes again with this uh, this good stuff. You know, And that's essentially what happens. So once, once that get clear, your eyes breathe. They feel great. And uh, so all the diagrams are the same. The eyes are real powerful, like organ, like uh, intestinal wall type device that sends light magnifies it inside and then accumulates it inside and sends out light back out which is very interesting if you think about superman then you might you know say that i'm pushing an envelope but that in tandem is the the maximum capacitized uh light being to be able to send that light back out the way it transcends into the eye like a magnifying glass so you're magnifying it with your lens it's pretty interesting so it's just nothing but a big giant crystal in your head with a bunch of super tough tissue holding it and muscles holding it together. So if you think about that hollow space and you think about your skin, whenever you pour um, alcohol, not saying put alcohol in your eyes, but what I'm saying is it's turpentine so far as the only thing I've tested. But uh, Supreme Patty was one of those little occult kids that put lemons in his eyes who wore a red band around his head so go figure that but uh yeah imagine that putting lemons in his eyes but uh anyways it never made him go blind and that was a powerful astringent lim limes and lemons but uh yeah so you see here in this hollow space once you attack this whole thing uh the infection once it's gone it's it's the same as putting water on on your body because turpentine on your body doesn't do anything unless there's a sore there. 
there's a if there's an infection, then it's going to sting. And that is what I'm coming to terms with. So I'm starting to realize the more the stuff pours out, the more my eyes can handle turpentine. Another thing, uh, in the front here, the pulling, as Mr. Cheeks pulls out all this poison, it gets brown in the front on the top layer. And uh, that has gotten lighter because uh, the turpentine has made it lighter and broken that stuff up. And uh, it's cleaning my eyes almost as if if I continue to do it, my eyes are going to become white again. So that's another thing. And it's making my sight more crisp, which is great, which is very shocking. So see the hollow space again. I keep referring to this hollow space going back to optic nerve that leads to the brain. It's very interesting. So that lens just needs to be cleaned off so it can send light back properly and within that negative space. It just makes total sense. The diagrams look really intimidating, but uh, if you let that do that, then you're just going to be looking for some kind of specialist to try to tell you how to do this. And you're not going to be looking to the sky for answers. <laughs> You're going to see all this stuff with these definitions. The definitions are uh, uh, apparent, you know, I mean, they're relative because they're labels for certain parts of the eye, right? But the way it is, it seems very foreign. So it kind of scares you and it says, man, what am I doing? You know what I mean? It kind of makes you intimidated, but, you know, that's what it's all for. So you don't go exploring into the body and, and doing stuff yourself instead of uh, finding someone that's going to tell you don't stare into the sun at all, you know? Don't do that. That's going to make you go blind. See this, this, and we all know that that's not true. So as far as that goes, uh, you can only trust it so much. But yeah, check it out. This hollow space is full of glue. A glue, water-soluble type element. Uh, take it. Yeah. And you're 80% water. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to uh, attack this space. I wonder how many times it'll take it to uh, to do that. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> then all that light comes pouring in and all that stuff just comes running out of the face. So all you got to do is really once you hit it and penetrate it and get in there. And then your, your onion sensation subsides sitting over a bowl of chopped onions. Once that's gone, then I would recommend going, going to sun gaze. And then you'll feel the light. You'll feel the eyes breathing amazingly. But then you'll feel the light just shoot all the way in straight back to this optic nerve back here. And then it hits your pineal gland. As soon as it does that, see the optic nerve doesn't even, doesn't even feel that light going through. It just says, oh, you got some more light. Great. And it feels great. So it's just like, wow, the optic nerve didn't even care about the concentration of sunlight hitting my lens. Are you serious? So this lens here magnified it and it hit my optic nerve and it didn't hurt. It just felt great. It hits the pineal gland and it starts to shatter the pineal gland. It tears into it. So this magnified light doesn't damage the optic nerve. The, the turpentine doesn't damage the optic nerve. None of the thing damages the eyes, it seems, as far as someone jumping up and down on your eyeball when it's on the street or something. You see what I'm saying? It's like the eye is like, it's amazing. The eye is amazing. So... Uh, with that being said, you have a big crystal device in here, a big blob of crystal silica in the eye. So if that is uh, an indication of how strong the eye is, it's holding this in place. And someone uh, like that kid with the purple eye did not lose any functions of this whatsoever. Just literally just stayed in one place. Didn't go blind, didn't scratch his cornea or nothing. Nothing. And he had a big feet print stamped into his face. He had... His whole right side of his face was swollen up like a like a muffin. And his eye inside of there was all perfectly fine. So imagine how tough the eye is. So, uh, yeah.